there's always that crunch to get baptisms. And there's always that that need to um to be better than you were before. I love that aspect of the mission where you're able to grow so much and like there's so much room to to grow because what happens is that every day you make a goal or you know every week or however you function um, you make a goal and then every day you have a chance to practice it every single time someone passes you in the street or they shouldn't pass you because you should be talking with everyone but you know every single time that you meet someone new you're able to practice that skill and I remember that I was I was going through a time in my mission where I was thinking, man, I know the scriptures really well. And I'd always known the scriptures well, but like it was kind of a little bit more cocky than I would desire to admit. And so I kind of trusted in the scriptures to say my words for me because through my Spanish studies, I'd always be looking at the scriptures and I used their words to express my thoughts instead of learning how to express my own thoughts into Spanish. So that was one of my goals was to be able to express my love for the gospel through through Spanish and not just through the scriptures. The scriptures are a very good tool and I love them. But I like how I was able to like take what I knew and take take that love for the people and actually learn how to express it more. So this was in my second area that I served in and I remember that was just one of my goals which just be me in Spanish. And um, so right before changes, they're called cambios, right before changes or transfers, we were walking. And I remember I was going to lose my companion. I already knew that. We already knew that she was going to get transferred. And I was like, man. And, but we had not found a single person to give to the new person coming in with me. Like we had no investigators. We had no one, um, not a single person. And um, I just remember her undying faith. And she just empowered me and she said, we're going to find someone tonight. The last five, three hours of being together as companions. We found this man who we'd passed like thousands of times. I know that people say that. I knew that this guy we'd passed a lot of times because he always smiled and he always waved at us and he was like, missionaries. So we always thought that he'd already knew about the gospel, right? That night he stopped us and he was just like, I just love the light in your guys' eyes. I know you're missionaries, but I don't even know what you guys teach. And oh my goodness, I remember Peterson and I were like looking at each other like, are you serious? So we start talking to him. And right then and there, we both felt he needs to have a Book of Mormon. Because he pulled out the spiritual book that he had. He's like, this is how I feel the Spirit. I feel it so strongly when I read the words of this this reverend guy, or I don't know what he was, I think a pastor or something, from a, like, I don't know, a sect of the Catholic Church, I can't remember. But we gave him the Book of Mormon, and he just held it in his hand, and it was almost like it was pure gold to him. He valued it so much. And then he looked at us, after looking down, he looked back at, at us and there was tears in his eyes and he said, I knew that there was more. And I was like, yeah. And then I had a chance to testify that I knew the Book of Mormon was true. And then I knew without a doubt that he was there because he too needed to know. And at that, like he just looked into our eyes and he just knew, he just knew. And anyway, so cameos happened. We, my friend got transferred my companion, and then I got a new one, and she was fresh. She was just from Ecuador, Guayaquil. Uh, no, Ecuador, Quito, she was from. And she just came in, she was so on fire, and I was like, we have one investigator. Because <laughs> we only had one. And it, but that didn't get her down. So we went to find this guy that we'd given the Book of Mormon to. He wasn't there. And, oh man. Yeah, that was so hard. Like, looking back, I can see the design of the Lord was so much greater. He had moved. In that short three days, he had moved. Uruguay shows move, like, super quick. They have a job to go. And they're called, um, oh man, what are they called? I'll, I'll think of the word. <laughs> um, but they, they go for a short time to do these little knick-knack jobs, and then they come back. 
so he had gone and we didn't know where he was so we ended up starting from scratch all over again with this new companion anyway long story short four month, four weeks later four weeks I got transferred out something something happened no no it was three months later yeah and I got transferred out and then this guy he came back to the church building where I said I would be like if you ever wanted to come we had talked to him, you know, three months earlier, and he comes showing up to church dressed in, the, in a, a suit that he, you know, I don't know, he, he came dressed up, looking great, and he came in and he said, I'm looking for Amana Hansen. And the other sister was like, you know, she actually, she lives in um, such and such place now, but what can we do for you? And he said, she gave me this book, and I knew when she said something when she said her testimony about this book, I knew it was true. And I haven't acted upon it. And I hadn't looked. And then I found this book again. And I read what she left for me. And I want to know more. Three weeks later, he was baptized. And even though I wasn't there, even though I, I had zero idea that I had that much impact, even with my testimony, he got baptized. And now he's, you know, a, a worthy priesthood holder. And he's doing really great in Uruguay. So I think that's such a great experience. Another experience I had was in that same area. And during that three months, that we couldn't find him. <laughs> um, we met another woman named Nair. And Nair was so amazing. I, don't, I never really knocked doors in my mission. But for some reason, right as we passed her house, I said, got to go knock on that one. I never knocked on doors. So like I, I didn't even went down the row and that was like the last house. N none of that. Like I just felt that I needed to go knock on her door. She didn't open the door. She opened up the window to the left of her door around the corner. And they're, they're like these little um, kind of like vinyl. They like clothes funny. They're not like window shutters, but they're like, I don't know. They're kind of cool plastic things to help with storms and stuff. So she opened that up. She was talking with us, and you could see this mountain of books behind her, like tons of shelves, like books upon books. It's like, no wonder she can't open her door. Like, that's what I was thinking. Like, she can't get out of her house. <laughs> but we ended up talking with her a little bit more. And um, it was so fun to, like, talk to her and to get to know her. She was, like, she's 60s, 70s. She has such great stories. And we just sat and talked with her for a long time. She's like, so why are you guys here? She finally asked us. Um, and so we, we told her like throughout the whole conversation, we had mentioned God a lot. And, um, we told her like that we're missionaries. So she's just like, that's great. And we asked her if we could come back some other time and talk about education and learning and why she was a teacher and things like that. Anyway, so we came back and for four, for three months. Yeah. Straight. We taught her the lessons. We taught her a lot of aspects of the gospel, everything under the sun. We taught her about temple work and priesthood. We taught her about our, our meetings. She was good friends with one of the ladies in our ward that was the Ruth Society president. So we tried to get them together and everything was like perfect, except for the fact that she wasn't progressing. She wasn't going to church. And so many of my district leaders were like, why are you still with her? Why are you still talking with her? What's going on? Like, I don't understand why she's not progressing. Why can't she progress? And both my companion and I both felt she needs this. And we don't, I don't know why, but every single time we prayed about dropping her or, or putting her aside, we never could. And there was something about it that just always rang true to us. Anyway, what happened was I got transferred out again. So both of these that I got transferred out of, they both ended up joining the church. She came three weeks later, she came to the church and she said, I know it's true. I'm coming. She never stopped coming. Now she's primary pre president of our little ward and her best friend's little society president. And it was so cool on how like the Lord just timed everything perfectly. Like it wasn't my baptism and I'm okay with that. She, but she is my good friend. And I know that the Lord definitely prompted us to continue and what's so cool about Nair is that we told her that her atheist husband was waiting for her to join the church. And she said, I don't believe that. She went on to the records right after she became a member and found that his work had already been done and that he was indeed ready to be sealed to her when she reaches her year mark. So I love that. Like the Lord really does, like he puts everything into an order. So...